gonna wash the wash gonna oil change the Yamaha bolt today yeah because it's needing it it's overdue um but first as you can see by the color of it it's needing a bit of a wash so here we go give it a good wash Well, that's the bike washed, um, now to give it an oil change, and as you know we'll have to heat the engine up first a bit, so that's a great excuse to take it for a wee quick short ride round the block, dry it off, and heat the engine up. Back in five minutes. So, all washed, it's ready to give the oil chain. It's up in the stand, as you can see. I'll sort of see it. I've got one of these stands that I bought. Absolutely fantastic, great for doing cruisers or this type of bike. Um, it holds up quite well. It can go a lot higher if you want it, but however, this is going to do it for me today. So, we're going to do an oil change. The bike, oh, let me see. The bike was bought a while ago. It's had its thousand k service, the, the one that the, the dealer does after a thousand k, I don't know what they do. Um, and since then it's only done about four thousand kilometres, and um, that's over a year. So the only reason I'm changing it is because it's been over a year since it last had an oil change. That's if they did change oil in the thousand k service. You never know unless you do it yourself. Um, so I'm going to change the oil, I'll show you what I'm going to use. Castrol, now this is 1040, 40 for 4 stroke engines, and it's called Power Release Formula. What it is, actually, it used to be Castrol GPS, T4, 1040, but they've changed the logo on it, so it's just the same oil, T4. It's semi-synthetic and 1040 which is exactly what this bike likes um, some people tend to go all out and buy fully synthetic but if the bike's not designed for it don't put it in you're not just wasting money but you can actually damage your bike i'll show you what i mean here's my others yamaha mt01 this thing is 1700 cc um it's the old yamaha warrior engine fitted in to a frame and called the MT-01. It's all R1 forks, brakes, swing arm, everything's R1 except cruiser engine. Now it's a, a great machine and anybody that knows engines will know that there's not a lot of horsepower in a, a V-twin because the V-twin is mostly torque and having a lot of torque puts a lot of pressure on your your parts like especially your clutch. Now your oil's designed um, for the clutch because it's a wet clutch it soaks in the oil so it's important you use the correct oil because if you don't you could damage your clutch now a lot of people with the MT-01 like this put fully synthetic in it and I say to them you shouldn't put that in it'll damage your clutch no my clutch is fine they'll say and then they tell me they've had to put a barnet clutch in with barnet springs which gives it more pressure and why have they had to do that because they've put fully synthetic oil in Never put fully synthetic oil in a V-twin, it doesn't need it. The V-twin is a 1950s design engine, or even earlier. Old push rods, it doesn't need fully synthetic. So, if you want to do an oil change in a V-twin, in Australia anyway, stick with the old Castro 1040 semi-synthetic. It's the best stuff for your bike, it'll perform good, it'll keep your engine cool, especially in an air-cooled bike. And... Yeah, it's just a generally good oil. Now, I'm going to show you the oil filter I'm going to use. This is out super cheap. Now, this is called... Sun's in the way. This is called Performance. What is it? Race Performance Oil Filters. Now, super cheap are good. They're stuck in more and more oil filters for all different types of bikes. And when I first got these oil filters, 
I got them for the MT-01 and thought I'd give it a try, see what it's like, keep my eye on it. And I took it out of the box and I looked at it and I thought, oh, that's handy. It's got a nut welded in the top and it's got the, the logo on the side, this performance and the part number. And I thought the part number is similar to the k &N filters. In fact, looking at this filter, it's identical to a k &N. So I've done a wee bit of research on the internet. And they're actually made, as far as I'm aware, in the same factory that make k &N filters. The serial number on the top is the same as k &N, so, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's just the same as a k &N filter, but half the price. Um, and an oil filter is an oil filter, as long as you don't buy cheap shit. So, yeah, if you want a good oil filter, with a nut on the top, super cheap auto do these, reasonably priced. And, like I say, same as a k &N performance filter. So when you go to do an oil change on your Yamaha Bolt, you need your oil filter. The correct type for the Yamaha Bolt, it's PR204. And you need your Castrol Power 1, 1040 semi-synthetic. And in order to do the job, the only tool you need is 17mm socket, or spanner, whichever you prefer to use. Socket's much easier. A pair of super cheap auto gloves, tool pros to keep your oil off your hands and a big tub to drain your oil into and a funnel for pouring your oil into there. Anyway, let's get started with this. So, looking at the bolt, if you come down here, okay, way way down here, under the foot peg, I'm trying to keep this focused, under the foot peg, you find a big nut. Okay, this you're looking at here is part of my jack thing. But under the frame, right under the foot peg, right underneath, you see that nut? That is the nut you take out to drain the oil. Okay? Not that wee thing next to the side, I don't know what that is. But that big nut there. Take that out and the oil drains out the engine. So, I'll do that now. I've actually slackened it off. Pre-slackened it, so... All I need to do... Use the bad filming while I try and get this in the bolt. All I need to do is get that on. Screw it off. And this will be hot, because I've had the engine running. Always best to change the oil when the engine's hot. There we go. And... There's the oil draining. Lovely black. How it should be <laughs> when it's used to be changed. So, yeah. So we'll let that drain away. And that should be fine. Now, another thing that you need, <coughs> which is really, really important, is, um, I'll just set that up a wee bit somehow, is um, rags because you're going to get in a mess doing this and you don't want to get oil all over yourself so I'll go and get some rags and oil running in look at that, nice and frothy so next we'll have to change the oil filter there's always oil in the filter now the book will tell you that the oil filter's down here at the front of the pipe you can see it there and I've put this tool on it to slacking it off because for some reason it was shitty tight so you screw that on move it turn it back tighten it turn and you just keep doing that until it's slack yeah once it's slack Take the tool off. See, this one doesn't have a nut because this is genuine Yamaha crap. Not the Yamaha's crap, Yamaha's a good bike. But a genuine filter. That's what they class. Now, when you slide it off, it will run a wee bit of oil out. But that's okay. You expect that. And then take the other filter right off. There we go. There it is. Genuine oil filter. Um, yeah. 
Now, the oil filters for this, it's a Denso, yeah. The oil filter for this, squeeze onto there. So the best way to do it is let the bike drain. Leave it for a good hour. Let all the oil drip out of it if you can. Out of there and out the sump plug. And then the thing will be near enough completely empty. And then you put the new filter on here. Put the sump plug back in, fill it with oil. Now, the best part about this, I'll get up off the floor, is that the Yamaha bolt takes four litres and the oil comes in four litre can. So that's even go. So that's even better, just to drop you in the ground. But it means you can put in all the oil, um, the whole can, that's your four litres. If there's a wee wee bit old oil left in it and it raises the level a wee bit, it's not going to do much harm as long as it's not way over. Now, old oil filter off, new oil filter. What I always do is just smear a wee bit of oil, take the cellophane off first. Smear a wee bit, they come pre greased, but I always smear a bit of oil in the o ring and then put it on as tight as you can by hand. Then use your socket, but just take it to hand tight and just a wee bit, nothing much. You don't crank these right up or you'll never get them off. Or worst case scenario, you could bugger up the threads on the, the engine. So do it up hand tight and then maybe just a quarter turn, something like that, until you're happy it's sealed. And once you, you put your oil and you start your engine, check it. If it's leaking, just give it a wee bit more, you know, we are socket but these are good because you put this on your 17mm socket fits this as well so that's only the one socket you need to do the whole complete oil change so anyway I'll get this lubed up and get it fitted on in about 20 minutes or so once it's stopped draining so it's been draining for a while so what I'm going to do is put the oil filter on so I just need the socket and the extension, just put them together, and the filter, and we'll go to the underneath of the bike. Put the oil filter on now, it's been draining for a good while now, so it should be ready to go. Again, oil filter just at the front, under the forks. Now, you can see that where it goes on. Talk about shaky hand syndrome. So you give it a wipe with a cloth, make sure there's no crap on it. I have wiped it already, but um, yeah, make sure there's no crap on it. So, yeah. so I'll give it another wipe with a wee drip run down there. And then once it's clean, just make sure there's nothing. Also make sure the old o-ring from the old oil filter isn't stuck on there. There's a new one all lubed up, ready to go on. So, let's find the thread, turn it on, it's as tight as I can get it by hand, so, oh, my ratchet's on the wrong way, just be one second, you can't see that, now. it's so dark up there. Um, yeah. Bloody thing. Right, the socket's the little filter zone. I'm just going to get the ratchet. And we've got an end. Like that, and you don't have to be too hard on it, just give it a wee bit until you feel it's stopped. Don't force it on, or it'll just shear off. And that's it, give it a wipe underneath with a cloth for any drips that happen to have dripped out. And then when you start it up, you'll be able to see if there's a leak. And I can guarantee you there probably won't be. It's quite easy to maintain these things, there's nothing difficult about them. 
give it a clean when you're under there in case there's any sweat marks or that from previous so that when you do check it you're not going to be finding oil that dripped there when you were changing it so yeah all good now let's go and see the sun's finished really. now she's been running for a while now just an odd drip so what we'll do is we'll get the bolt here Give it a clean up. Um, sometimes it's advisable to change the washer, but the washer's okay. Yeah, you get away with putting it back on again. It's entirely up to yourself what you want to do. But we'll clean that up, screw it back up, nice and tight, and then we can put the oil in. <sighs> so that's the bolt back on, filters on. So oh, it's just ready to put some oil in this baby. Now because it's um, 4 litres, we can get away with just pouring a 4 litre can of oil straight in, just like that. Put the whole lot in and then check your dipstick and you'll find she's fine. So the oil's in now, so what you want to do is um, Start her up, let her run for a minute, a couple of revs in between, switch her off, let her stand for a couple of minutes, take the dipstick out, put it back in, clean it, put it back in, and pull it out and it'll show you how full your oil is. If it's a wee bit over, a wee bit under, doesn't matter, as long as it's not too much. And that's your oil complete. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is, I seem to... I hear a lot of people with these bikes saying they've got a ticky noise coming from the engine and some people have been told by Yamaha that it's just normal for that type of engine. You know, I don't know, it shouldn't tick. Um, mine's is doing it and it's only done near enough 5,000 k's. Shouldn't be ticking. So what I'm going to do is do the, the tappets adjust them or valve clearance, if you want to call it that. Now, I'm not doing that today, but if you keep an eye out, that'll be in a future video pretty soon, maybe even tomorrow if I get the time, um, on how to adjust your valve clearance and get rid of that tick, 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 which can be annoying. Um, some of the Yamaha shops tell people to put a noisy pipe on it, <clears throat> that's a great cure for a noisy tappet. But anyway, yeah, so I'll be doing that in the next video. So, so that's the oil change done, Yamaha bolts all ready to go. So I hope that was useful.